This video is going to cover special right triangles, which is 5-7. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about two really special right triangles, and the first one is 45-45-90 triangle. So if you think about a 45-45-90 triangle, it's obviously isosceles because if two angles are the same, then the sides opposite them are the same. And if that's the case, the two of the sides are going to match. And then the ratio of no matter what kind of uh, length these sides are, if it is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, are in this L, L, and L root 2 ratio. So when you set up a 45, 45, 90 triangle, opposite the 45s would be the L or X, whatever you want to call that. And opposite the right angle is L times root 2. So this says, find the value of x, give your answer in simplest radical form. So as soon as I look at this, I know it's a right triangle. I know one of the angles is 45, which means the other one would have to be as well. Opposite the 45s are your L's, so L, L, and L root 2. The one side length you have is over here, which tells you that L is 7. And if L is 7, then this side would also be 7. And this side would be 7 times the square root of 2. And then you've got the side lengths. B, again, now I know it's a right, or sorry, it's a 45, 45, 90, because both of these sides are the same. So I don't have an angle measurement, but if both the sides are the same, then it has to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So opposite, these are your L. This would be L down here, and this would be L root 3. This time you're given the L root 3. So if L root, sorry, L root 2. L root 2 equals 3, and I want to find the other side. Like, I have to solve for L. So I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of 2. And then you remember we have to rationalize this. So I'd multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 2, and I get L equals 3 root 2 times root 2, I'm sorry, over root 2 times root 2, which is just 2. And that's going to be either of the other side lengths. In these examples, it says for 1A, this is now showing you that these angles are congruent. And if that's the case, again, they'll both have to be 45. This would be my L. This would be my L root 2. This time I know the value of L, so all I have to do is plug it in next to L root 2. I'd get L, which is 10 root 2 times root 2. And then root 2 times root 2 is 2. And 10 times 2 is 20. And that's the remaining side length. 1B, now I've got 45, 45 marked on there. Here's my L. This would also be L. This is L root 2. So I'd set 16 equal to L root 2 here. I'd have to divide both sides by root 2. I end up with 16 over root 2. And then I have to rationalize it, which is here. We'll multiply both the top and the bottom by square root of 2. And I get 16 root 2 over root 2 times root 2, which is 2. And then you're here. Because 16 and 2 are both divisible by 2 and they're on the outside of the square roots, I can say 2 goes into 16 8 times and I'd get 8 root 2 for the remaining side. All right, second type of right triangle is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So in this case, one of your angles is obviously a right angle because it has to be a right triangle. And then one of the other two is 30 and the other is 60. And the ratio goes like this. Opposite the 30 is your S or X, any kind of variable you want. Opposite the 60 is the S times the square root of 3. It's a really different color. And then opposite the 90 is 2 times S or whichever variable you're going to use. So these are important ratios. You're going to see these again for a long time. You're going to see them again uh, next year and then every other math you take from here on out pretty much. And you'll definitely see these in uh, standardized tests. They love 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles. So we're going to set them up the same way we did 45 except for what value you're putting on the sides. So in this example, you've got a 30, 60, 90 triangle. You know that opposite the 30 is your S, opposite the 60 is your s root 3 and opposite the 90 is your 2s. Of those three side lengths, you'll get given one of them and in this case we have the 2s. So then I would say that 2s equals 60, 
divide both sides by 2 and I get s equals 8. Now to find the other two sides, I'm going to take s and plug them in. So this one, I don't have to do any work. If x equals s, then x is 8. This one, y equals s times the square root of 3, so y would equal 8 times the square root of 3. In B, 30 is here, opposite the 30 is your s. 60 is here, opposite the 60 is your s root 3. And your 90 is here, opposite the 90 is your 2s. So of the three side lengths, this time I have the s root 3. This one's the hardest one. So if s root 3 equals 11, then I would divide both sides by the square root of 3. And I get s equals 11 over the square root of 3, which we now know can't be left that way. I have to rationalize it. So I multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. I get 11 square root 3 over root 3 times root 3, which is just 3. And that's the S. So that would get plugged in here. And I would know that that's X. X would equal 11 root 3 over 3. And on my Y over here, it's 2 times S. So Y would equal 2 times 11 root 3 over 3. That's 2 over 1. Multiply all the numerators and I get 22 root 3. And all the denominators and I'd get 3. So here's just some additional um, questions with the work already done out for you. In 3a, opposite the 30 would be the x. That's your s. In, so here's my s. Opposite the 60 is your y. That's my s root 3. And opposite the 90 is your 2s. So this time, I'm given the 2s length. 18 root 3 equals 2s. Divide 2 on both sides and s because this cancels equals 18 divided by 2 which is 9 root 3 and remember we only divide the 2 into the 18 so you can only simplify outside the square root of both numbers or inside if they're both underneath the root so this is my s which is going to be the value for x and then I would have to take this and plug it in here to get y so y would equal 9 root 3 times root 3 and 9 times root 3 times root 3 this becomes 3 9 times 3 is 27 3b opposite the 30 is your s opposite the 60 is your s root 3 and opposite the 90 is your 2s this time you have the s this is the easiest one so all i have to do is take those plug them in s would come in here y would equal 2 times 5, which is 10. S would come here. X would equal 5 times root 3. 3C, opposite the 30 is your S. Opposite the 60 is your S root 3. Opposite the 90 is your 2S. This time I'm given 2S. So 2S equals 24, which means S equals 12 which means x equals 12 and y equals 12 root 3. And the last one on this page, this would be 30. Opposite the 30 is your s. Opposite the 60 is your s root 3. Opposite your 90 is your 2s. This time, you're given the s root 3 side. So again, these are the trickier ones. 9 equals s root 3. Divide both sides by root 3. S equals 9 over root 3, but we can't leave it that way. So we rationalize by multiplying the top and the bottom by root 3. And you get 9 root 3 over 3 times 3, which is th root 3, sorry, times root 3, which is 3. And then these get reduced. 3 root 3 equals S. So now I know this is Y and would get plugged in times 2. So that what's on the outside gets multiplied together, and I get x equals 6 root 3. All right, here's the like lesson quiz to go over what we what you went over in this section. So number one, opposite the 30 would be your s. 
this would be 60 opposite the 60 would be your s root 3 and opposite the 90 would be your 2s so if root 6 equals 2 times s I would divide both sides by 2 s equals root 6 over 2 which is weird but can't be simplified so it's going to stay that way so then that would get plugged in over here so I know x equals root 6 over 2 and it would get plugged in here so root 6 over 2 times root 3 put the root 3 over 1 multiply straight across in the numerator that becomes square root of 18 over 2 and then 18 is 2 and 9 and 3 and 3 which means there's a pair of threes and this would be 3 root 2 because who doesn't have a match over 2 that's your y Number two, 60 is in my bottom left corner, which means 30 would be here. Opposite the 30 is the A. Opposite the 60 is your A root 3. Opposite the 90 is your 2A. This time I have my A root 3 side. So 10 root 3 equals A root 3. I have to divide both sides by square root of 3. So this looks complicated, but it's actually easier because the roots cancel out. And I just get A is 10 which means this side is 10, and this side is 2 times 10, which is 20. Number 3 has a 45, which means this is a 45-45-90 triangle. Opposite the 45s would be my L's. Opposite the 90 would be L root 2. So if I already know that this is 5, all I have to do is take it and plug it in here to get that x is 5 root 2. And last one, 45. This would be a 45. Opposite those 45s are your l's. Opposite the 90 would be your l root 2. So a little bit more complicated here. 9 would equal l root 2. I divide both sides by root 2 to get rid of, or to get the l by itself. And L would equal 9 over root 2, which we know has to get rationalized, both the top and the bottom, square root of 2. 9 root 2 over root 2 times root 2, which is 2. And that's your L. Again, comp like, looks complex, but it can't be simplified. So that's not only that side, but also your X. Could rewrite this as 4.5 root 2. Uh, that's the same answer. All right, given, now we're looking at the bottom. So find the perimeter and the area of each figure. Give your answers in simplest radical form. So number five says a square with a diagonal length of 20. So let's get ourselves a square with a diagonal. Not perfect, but it'll work. And we've got that the, the diagonal length is 20. So what hopefully you know about a square is that it has four right angles. Every corner's got a right angle. So if we took and divided um, by using that diagonal, this angle in half, it's going to make this into two 45, 45, 90 triangles. So because we know the relationships of the sides, we could say that this is L, this is L root 2, and this is L. And if we want to find the perimeter, we just have to solve for L. And then multiply times 4. So we're going to say that 20 equals L root 2. And then divide both sides by root 2. L equals 20 over root 2. Which gets rationalized by multiplying the top and the bottom by root 2. And can get simplified this time into 10 root 2. So that is the measure of one of your side lengths. So I can add 10 root 2 plus 10 root 2 plus 10 root 2 plus 10 root 2. Or because it's a square, I know all four sides are the same. So I can take this and multiply by 4. 4 is outside the radical, so it gets multiplied by the 10. I get the 40. And the square root of 2 would stay the same. This time it gives us a measure of 20 centimeters. So I would say that the perimeter is 40 root 2 centimeters. And the second part of this question is, what's the area? 
So the area of a square is side squared or length times width, but they're both the same. 10 root 2 times 10 root 2. When we multiply square roots, we'd multiply the numbers on the outside. So 10 times 10 is 100. And the numbers underneath the square root, square root 2 times square root 2, which is 2. And I get the area is 200, and it's in centimeters. Area is units squared, so it would be 100, or sorry, 200 centimeters squared. Okay, number six is an equilateral triangle with height 24. So if we could draw a triangle, equilateral, hopefully it hasn't been so long, and we remember equilateral means all three sides the same. And if it's equilateral, we know it's equiangular, which means this would be 60 degrees and 60 degrees and 60 degrees. And it's giving us that the height is 24. So when we draw the height in, we cut this top angle into two congruent angles, which is a 30 and a 30, which means we now have two 30, 60, 90 triangles. So if we just focus on half this triangle, We can find one of the side lengths and then multiply times three because it's equilateral. And then we'll do one half base times height to find the area. So here's my 60 opposite the 60 would be my A root, or sorry, not A, S root three opposite the 30 would be my S and then opposite the 90, which would be here, would be my 2S. So the one side length that I actually know a measurement for is the opposite of the 60, which means that S root 3 equals 24. And then to solve for S, I would divide by root 3. S equals 24 over root 3, which gets rationalized by multiplying the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. And I get 24 root 3 over root 3 times root 3, which is 3. And 3 goes into 24 8 times. So S equals 8 root 3, which is half the bottom side. So I can either double it here to get this full side, or this is the same thing. 2 times 8 root 3 gives me the full side here, which is 16 root three. So that's one side length to find the perimeter of an equilateral. I just do three times that. Three times 16 is 48 square root three. And it's at inches, so perimeter is in inches. To find the area, I would use area equals one half base times height. One half the base, which is a whole side here, which we now know is four, or sorry, is 16 root three. And the height of the triangle, which is what we were originally given as 24. So I can do this in any order because it's multiplication. I can take that one half and I can multiply it times the 16 and I'd get eight. And then I would do 24 times eight And I get 192 and the square root of 3. And it's in inches squared because it's area. All right, those are your special right triangles 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90.